Amen. First John said, if it's seed remain in you, you sin not. <laughs> if you really got it, honey, you're not going to do it willfully. Amen. You're not going to sit down and say, I'm going to do it on purpose. Amen. Honey, because if you've got the Spirit of God, you'll look at that devil and you say, oh, devil. Honey, you might have fooled me once. You might have fooled me twice. But I know your trick and I know your tactic. And tonight, I'm taking my stand and I have got the victory. Amen. Who is he to overcome of the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. Lord, tonight, God's give you the power to overcome it. Tonight, amen. You got your Bible. Go with me. Amen. That's why I feel the good old Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Samuel. Amen. The Lord woke me up last night. Amen. Begin to deal with me this early this morning. Amen. And I'll been study all day. Amen. Before church, seeking the Lord and praying. Amen. The Lord led us to 2 Samuel chapter 11. Amen. I'm going to be going to a couple different places tonight. Amen. So bear with me. Amen. But our main text is going to be, amen, where we're reading from 2 Samuel chapter 11. Those of you that study your Bible know this story. Those of you that have read, amen, and sought the Lord knows about this man by the name of David. Amen. The Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. A man that sought the Lord, but also a man that was gone away. Amen. Tonight, the Lord gave me the message, drawn away. When he woke me up the first thing that he spoke to me early this morning, when I woke up, the Lord spoke to me, drawn away. I want to talk to you tonight. Are you being drawn away? See, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to draw your thought process away from God. Why? Because the Bible said, Amen. Whose mind is stayed upon the Lord shall remain in perfect peace. So he wants to draw your thoughts away. He wants to draw your eyes away. He wants to draw your heart away from God. So tonight, amen, let us all stand in the honor of the reading of the word. Amen. Second Samuel chapter 11. Starting verse 1. Amen. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rahab. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked up on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messenger and took her and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Verse 5, the, And the woman conceived, and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the wars 
have prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the doors of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? When then did when why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest and as thou so livest I will not do this thing and David said unto Uriah tarry here today also and tomorrow I will let thee depart so Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow and when David had told him he eat and drank before him and he made him drink and at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servant of his Lord but went not down to his house and it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter unto Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah and he wrote in the letter saying set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retrieve ye from him that he may be smitten and die and it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of Dan. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Let us pray. Father, Lord, tonight I ask, O oh God, that I hide myself under your cross behind you. Lord, that you may be exalted. Father, I ask you tonight, Lord, move among these people. God, I pray you're anointed. God, I can do nothing without your spirit. God, I pray move upon each and every heart. God, I pray reach down, God. Strengthen. Open eyes. Help lead. And God, to the ministration of your word. God, that I not be seen, but Lord, you may be exalted. Father, that all things be done under your glory. Lord, I ask you here, touch that one nearest hell. Move upon that one that's being drawn away. Father, restore that little one. Tonight, that sinner that needs saved, move. And say, I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. When I woke up, my heart began to break as God began to reveal to me that there are some that is being drawn away. Just as David stood upon that rooftop. Blessed by all that God had given him through the anointing. If you remember, you begin to read in 1 Samuel, you begin to see the beginning of David. How that there, because the fall of Saul, God found him a man that would be after his own heart and begin to anoint David. And David being a little rudy man, not big in stature, but because he was anointed, because God had chose him, he had slain the champion of the Philistines at Gath. There, and in between the valleys, he destroyed what paralyzed Israel.
Israel but he went just a smooth soul and a slave now afterward honey God used him that whenever they entered into the city the whole city cried out Saul had slain a thousand but David had slain ten thousand but God had used this man and anointed him and placed him as king of Israel I want you to know something right now honey tonight if you have been bought by the blood of lamb if you've been saved honey God has placed an anointing over you God has chosen you out of the midst of the world and wants to use you and set you up on the palace honey just like David honey to be a ruler honey to be a king why do you think Peter said that we are a holy nation a royal priesthood a peculiar people because why we're joint heirs with Christ and we're seated in high places amen just like David was amen but David was drawn away see that enemy is a sly fox that devil comes amen in the moment when you're weak that devil comes in that moment amen when you're not paying attention in the middle notice they was in the middle of war Amen. Come on now. Read verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time the kings go forth to battle. They was in the midst of war. I'm going to tell you right now how the devil draws you away is in the midst of war. When you begin to battle, when you begin to fight, and you begin to get weary and weak, that enemy will offer you things for your flesh to draw you away. Therefore, David came to pass at evening time in the middle of battle. Amen. After war was going on, after troubles and trials, after heartache, after adversity, after the enemy that came in, evening tide came. I mean, he knows what happens in the evening. This natural man wants to take rest. This flesh wants to have rest. How many knows tonight? Amen. Honey, you can't take your rest in a spiritual warfare. You can't take rest when you're battling against an adversary that never gives up, that never gives in, that never stops, that will continue to fight you from the moment you wake up to the time you lay down for bed. You can't give up. David walked out in a moment of rest, wanting to try to take it easy. How many of us tonight is wanting to try instead of war and, and battle and fight against the enemy, wants to try to sit back and have it easy? Honey, there's children, amen, involved. Amen. Listen tonight. Amen. There's family members involved. There's loved ones involved. My wife, my home, my church is all involved. I can't sit back and watch the devil drive it straight to hell. David was a man of war. Like many of you here tonight, you're men and women of war. You're not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. You're not afraid to grab a hold of that bottle of anointing oil and take it and walk up to your front door and say just as Moses bled the blood on the mantle and upon the doorpost. Just go up to the rooftop 
that lay down. Oh, yes. The Bible said that even child, David rose from off his bed, walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Can I tell you something? The enemy's not going to come at you with ugly things. Come on now. He's the most beautiful angel of heaven. You read in Ezekiel, and you'll see the beauty of Satan. You'll see the rubies and the sapphires and, and the sardis stones that was all about him. He comes with you with beauty. He comes at you with something you like. He comes at you with something your flesh desires. Just like he came with David. Tonight I don't want to read you the warning of what James began to write. The Bible said in James chapter 1 verse 15 or 14, But every man is tempted when he's drawn away. When he's drawn away, is the enemy drawing you away. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Listen to what the Bible said. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. My beloved brethren, see, James knew how the enemy's power operated. He knew how the enemy's power came against the church. And so therefore, James began to warn the church and do not let the enemy come to draw you away. I want you to notice, if you go back where we was, Notice what happened. How that the Word of God coincides with itself. And it came to pass in verse 2. In an evening time, David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. Lust there began. But when lust conceived, the Bible said it bringeth forth sin. What's the Bible say that he done next? And from the root he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. See, there's one thing you need to learn tonight. The devil would try to draw you away. But you've got to learn that when lust cometh forth, when it conceives, you kill it. When lust comes forth and tries to be born, you destroy it. When lust comes forth, I'm mean, like the old saying is, let it burn in my over your head, but you can't let it make a nest. How many knows what the word conceive means? It means to birth. So when lust is conceived, when it's born, it'll bring forth sin. And see, when it's conceived, if you'll kill it right then, that sin will not kill you. Because the Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It will kill that lust from the very beginning and take control over this body and put it in subjection. Therefore, we won't have the problem. But notice how David was drawn away. Because he was weak, worn, and he saw something his flesh wanted. Just like us. We'll get weak and worn. And the enemy will draw us away with the pleasures of life. Notice, hey man, the friends will say, let's go have a good time. Hey man, who cares if it's Sunday? Notice the enemy will say, Oh, you don't got to read your Bible. Oh, let's go out and eat. I mean, the enemy will offer up everything he can to draw you away from the things of God. But tonight, honey, I mean, are you allowing that devil to draw you away? Oh, 
but tonight we don't realize the long road that sin will drag us down. Because we let it conceive. Because we let it take place. I mean, he's guilty of letting it take place. Come on now. Be real with yourself. I mean, he's, I mean, he's allowed that enemy to come right on in and slip right into your home, slip right into your life, slip right into your family, slip right in uh, into your relationship with God. It don't have to be, it don't have to be with a Bathsheba. It can be with Facebook. It don't have to be with a Bathsheba. Honey, it can be with your job. Honey, anything that will draw you away from God. If it takes you away from God, it's not of God. Get rid of it. It's time tonight that we learn. If he had got rid of Bathsheba, he would have never had the heartache. He would have never had the trouble. He would have never known pain of the loss of a child. If it had not been for allowing the enemy to draw him away. See, tonight many of us know the story. Amen. We've heard the story. But how many of us have to sit down and truly examine how the enemy began to draw us away? See, just like that, he called for Sheba to come into his house. He lied with her. And there, because the enemy drawn him away, you can't blame the devil because you lay in the bed with a whore. Oh, you hear me tonight? You can't blame the devil for something you do. You can't lay blame on the other person because of the fault you have. Amen. David couldn't blame Bathsheba. He's the one called for it. Amen. But many of us, amen, would have been like, it was her fault she was bathing naked. If she hadn't have been naked, I wouldn't have done it. But amen, we need to learn in the house of God tonight how that we must, honey, know how to control. Every man must know how to control his own vessel. Some of us don't know how to control ourselves. Amen. Some of you ex addicts get around somebody with a pill. Honey, you act like a dog foaming at the mouth. Don't know how to contain yourself. Some alcoholics get around somebody, honey, with an 18 pack. Don't know how to control themselves. Let me tell you, the Bible said to eschew the very appearance of evil. We must learn how to kill the birth. Of the enemy drawing us away. See, because tonight, amen, if we'll allow the enemy to draw us away, it'll birth something that'll literally destroy our lives. This man's life, therefore, had been destroyed because of the birth that was conceived that night. How the enemy drawed him. Away. Now, however, the enemy's drawn you away tonight. It might not be with a Bathsheba. But however it is tonight, there'll be things born that'll come to pass in it that's going to cause you heartache, that's going to cause you pain, that's going to cause you trouble and affliction, that's going to make you wish that you would have done something in the very beginning when you realized it was wrong. See, tonight, David began to acknowledge, he began to study. Listen to what the Bible said. Verse 3, And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliab, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messenger and took her, and she came unto him, and he lied with her, and she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sinned and told David and said, I am with child. Notice what David began to do because he had done been placed in the snare of the enemy because he was drawn away. The Bible said that David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite and Joab. And 
and sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come under the David, demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. He began to teach and act like Uriah. He was his best friend. How's things going down there? Everything all right after he done just slept with his wife. Some of you sleeping with the devil. Then trying to be his best friend and trying to cover it up. Just like David. He tried to get Uriah to go down and to lie with Bathsheba to cover up his sin. That's like some of you, you'll use other people in your life to try to cover your sin. You'll blame it on other people to cover your sin. You'll use other people, go by another man, act like they're your best friend to try to cover your sin. David done the same thing. Why? Because honey, it's how the enemy operates. Realize, amen, a man of God that don't war in prayer and labor in the word and gets up and preach, you'll know. Why? Because there's no anointing behind it. Then he'll blame his wife. I didn't get time. Then he'll blame his children. They was making too much noise. Oh, come on now. I'm trying to preach you and teach you not to let the devil draw you away. Because it's going to cause you a lot of hell, heartache, and pain. And tonight, if you don't deal with the devil, he'll drag you straight to hell. That's what he wants. The Bible began to teach us that not only once did he try to cover it up with Uriah, but he tried it twice. And it couldn't happen. Uriah began to tell David, no. I'm not going to go to my house and lie in my bed and eat my food with my friends is out here. They're laboring. And honey, the Lord, what a real man of God right there. Honey, we had people like Uriah in the church saying, I'm not. Honey, my church is fasting. I'm going to fast with them whether I'm there or not. My church is warring. I'm going to war with them whether I'm there or not. I'm going to pray whether I'm by myself or whether I'm in the midst of battle with them. That's what Uriah was saying. Uriah said, I'm not going to go enjoy the pleasures of my house while my, my brethren's out here warring and dying and fighting for us. Some of you, hey man, just like David, don't care. Hey man, you wouldn't labor on your knees for 20 minutes while you've got people in this church praying for hours for your soul. Oh, tonight we must understand it's all a trick and a tactic of the enemy to draw us away from God. He wouldn't like nothing better, shotgun, but to draw you away and lead you astray. How many knows tonight, though? If you're here tonight and the devil has drawn you away, hey amen, guess what? Honey, there is a shepherd. Oh, listen. Honey, David was a little shepherd boy, but he wasn't like this shepherd. The Bible said, honey, that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd, honey, goeth before the flock. Honey, he'll leave the 99 and go after that just one. And he'll return them and pack them on his shoulder and bring them back to the fold. Even though they was drawn away. Amen. You can be drawn away by the enemy tonight, but Jesus is saying, I'm still here seeking. I'm still saving. I'm still bringing them back. I'm still returning them back to the fold. I'm still on the throne. I've still got control. I still have power. And I'm pulling them back. Amen. Just like this. The Bible said he set a hook in the jaw and he's pulling them back. Tonight, God said he's pulling them back. There's something here, the enemy's trying to draw you away, draw you away, and you've let it happen. Amen. You'll be just like David, you'll suffer the pain. Amen. You'll suffer the agony for it. You'll know the heartache and realize the shame of the things you've done. But one thing about it is, amen, David was still a man after God's own heart. David was still a man that had favor in God. David was still a man that God still left him on the throne and give him blessing. Even though 
you must draw away. You bad fool if you don't think the enemy can't draw you away. You bad fool if you don't think that you can't slip and slide down that rough road backwards. Honey, what do you think? Jeremiah went to Israel He said, oh Israel Thou art like a backsliding heifer Honey, many of us Amen, we might not want to admit it But there's times Amen, that we've slid backwards There's times we felt bad And God has had to come And grab a hold of us And shake us And pull us back The way he is that enemy wants to draw you away. And see, when lust is conceived, when it's born, it bringeth forth death. Notice, tonight, if you've never read the text of the Scriptures fully of David and Bathsheba, go home tonight and study it. But tonight you'll see that Bathsheba bared a son When she, was, when she bore that son, because David had tried covering it up, because David tried hiding it, you can't hide your sin from God. Because he tried hiding it, because he tried covering it up, Uriah killed, family destroyed, kingdom put in reproach. Because one man was drawn away. But listen, as he was drawn away, I thank God for true men of God. I thank God for true women of God. That when I've been drawn away, they'll be just like, amen, Nathan, the prophet. I thank God for real men and women of God. The Bible said in chapter 12 and verse 1, And the Lord said, Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the rich and the other poor. That man of God came to him and began to open his eyes up. See, like tonight, there's someone in this house that God is trying to pull back. That God is trying to take back into His fold. That the enemy has drawn away. And God give me this message tonight to tell you that God wants you back. You're His. But acknowledge where you are. You may face the consequence, but He still wants to show you favor. I don't want to give you a few examples of a few men that never had the chance of David. That never had the opportunity like David did after they was drawn away. Look at the king. Samuel. And look tonight at how Samuel <laughs> came. And he tried to open the eyes of Saul. Saul being blinded. Saul being drawn away. Saul listening to the adversary. But there King Saul lost his anointing. I want you to look tonight not only at King Saul but the seventh chapter of the book of Joshua. There was a man by the name of Achan. The enemy drawed him away after a battle on his garment. And that was it. There was no repentance. There stoned and died. But Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the Holy Ghost. And there, they was drawn away by the enemy. And no repentance. God didn't have to give you this second chance tonight. But he said, I saw my heart. I see where you're at. And the enemy has drawn you away. But tonight, I shall give thee mercy. Do you think he, he didn't have to spare David after David sinned? You look in the scripture. How many men of God 
Look at Lot. Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom because he was drawn away. God spared Lot and delivered him by the favor of Abraham. But Lot's wife was destroyed and turned to a pillar of salt because the enemy brought her away. That devil's trying to draw you away tonight. But in the acknowledgement through the Word of God, are you going to come back? Are you going to allow it? Are you going to stop the hand of the enemy? Because tonight, after David acknowledged his sin, he repented. After David acknowledged where he was, he repented. And God gave him favor. But tonight, I don't know if you'll have that same favor if you don't repent. Because David repented. See, we must repent. We must turn to God and say, Oh God, I acknowledge. See, if you can't acknowledge your sin, you can't be forgiven for it. Many people don't want to acknowledge it. That's why they don't come to church. That's why they don't listen to the preacher. That's why they won't hear what men and women of God have to say. Because men love darkness rather than light. But tonight, God wants to show you His love. His marvelous grace. Hath He not shooed it to thee before? Had they not had His hand of mercy? Had they not provided? Had they not supplied? Had they not healed? Had they not shown His anointing? Tonight, I ask you this question. Has the enemy been drawing you away? Because tonight, the shepherd's out on the field. The shepherd's out on the side of the mountain. The shepherd's out in the wilderness search for those that the enemy had drawn away to bring back into the fold. Before we get ready to give an altar call, I want to read you this last portion of Scripture the Lord has given me. The Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 17, but if in thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth the record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, and that both thou and thy seed may live. 